My friends, let's do a soul tribe reading. I hope you guys are doing well. I had a plan for my day today and it got completely derailed. Um, <laughs> but I believe in divine timing, so maybe it all happened for the best. You know, I got up super early because I had an appointment and then I was, you know, I don't know if you guys are neurodivergent or resonate with waiting mode, but when I'm waiting for something, it's like I can't think about anything else. Like if I'm waiting to leave my house for an appointment or I have something that's coming up, I'm like stuck in waiting mode until it happens. So I was kind of, you know, wasting away my morning. And then right before I went to go to this appointment, they were like, oh, it's we had to move it. It's canceled. So anyway, my whole day has just kind of been derailed. Um, I don't even have a plan for this soul tribe reading, but I just felt called to come do one. And I'm probably just going to grab whatever deck is closest to me. <laughs> um, and we'll see what needs to come out. I hope you guys are doing well. I, um, I'm doing pretty well. I didn't do any readings yesterday, but it wasn't because I wasn't feeling well. It was just because I decided to take a rest day and hang out with my kids. Um, but anytime that I do that, I kind of find, um, I kind of find that I don't feel the best at the end of the day. Like yesterday, I didn't feel very great mentally after taking the day off. And the thing that's really hard, again, I don't know why I'm talking to you about this, but the thing that's hard when you work and you do, you're doing something that you love and that's your soul path, other people see it as work when I don't see it as work. So like, you know, my kids will make the comment or my partner like, you you know, it's the weekend. Why are you working? Or you don't have to work all the time. I don't work all the time. Um, but I I am very often called to come do readings and I don't see I don't see it as work. Um, and it's also hard to explain when you're feeling called to do readings. Like I never understood what that meant until I started doing this. I'd hear other readers talk about it. Um what deck? Maybe we'll do two. We'll see. We'll see what we get up to. <laughs> um, anyway, so let's do this one. The law of positivity, positivism, or however you say it. Um, and we'll see what needs to come through. <clears throat> we'll see what you need to hear. There's also a chapter of this book that we're going to read. I don't think it's a long one. There's no such thing as falling behind. There's not just one way your life can unfold. And I do believe that. I believe that we have different timelines that we have access to. I know that sounds woo. Um, and I believe that, you know, life can change and all of those things. Um, but anyway, let's see what we need to get up to. <laughs> There's a lot of outside noise going on outside my house right now. I'm kind of hoping we're almost done for the day. Um, it's really interesting. Again, I don't know why I'm feeling called to talk about this, but earlier I was doing a reading that wasn't a love reading. I'm not really sure what it was. <laughs> um, I even said that. It's like this reading feels really all over the place, but there was something that came through about trauma and having a lack mindset, and that's something that I'm working on with myself. And again, I don't know why I'm telling you any of this, but I always, you know, I know that whenever I rant about anything, it's because somebody needed to hear it or somebody resonates with it. And I've told you guys before that I, I grew up, I almost said I woke up. I grew up in a household where, you know, there was often not enough food. Um, we had to really, like, I remember rationing our food. So like we weren't allowed to eat, you know, snacks because we needed them for school. And sometimes the priority of where the money was being spent was not um, on the roof over our head. Now, while I did have a roof over my head as a child, um, I also have memories of, you know, I have trauma when it comes to the telephone because we constantly had bill collectors calling and people wanting their money. And I just learned to be afraid of the phone. Like anytime it rang, my parents were like, oh my gosh, who is it? Don't answer it. And then when caller ID became a thing, it was like, wait for the caller ID to pop up and don't answer it. 
And I grew up hating the phone. I cannot talk on the phone. Like my friend Michelle knows I feel bad. It's like, I cannot talk on the phone. I can talk to you in text. I can send you a video of me talking. <laughs> but to talk on the phone, I have like deep rooted <laughs> phone trauma. Um, and the same with money and spending money. So, you know, when I was, I have a point, I'm getting to it. <laughs> Um, so when I was younger, things like this came out in a reading earlier, things like, you know, plates or towels or things that you need around the house were not a priority. They, so I never learned how to take care of myself in that sense. And I grew up always feeling that lack mentality. Um, and I've always had trauma and I'm going to tell you some really weird things about myself, <laughs> So like weird little things about me, like whenever I go into a store, if it happens to me when I'm alone, as I'm approaching the cash register, I start to feel panicked and I start to feel anxious about how much everything's going to cost. Um, when I'm with out with my partner and that happens, I bail. Like as soon as we get to the checkout, I believe that self-improvement is natural and healthy. Yes, I do. <laughs> Um, as we're approaching the checkout, I'll be like, see you later. I don't want to hear the total. I don't want to hear it. Um, my sister and I both have deep rooted wounds where we feel guilty if we buy ourselves anything or do anything nice for ourselves. Um, and I didn't know she had this until recently when, you know, we were away and I told her you should buy that for yourself. And she said, no, I'm not worth it. Like she's anyway. Um, so one of the things that I'm doing as my healed self is I'm trying to crash. I just heard a crash outside. I'm trying to do the things that weren't a priority when I was a kid. Like if something were to break around our house when I was a kid, my parents would not call. Like if it was a, a leak, they would not call a plumber. If something broke, they would not call an expert. Um, we would just let it be broken or they would try and fix it themselves, which never worked. They still do this. Um, not that you'll ever see this mom and dad, but <laughs> so I'm really trying to, my whole point is that I am trying to, and it's been hard for me to focus on the things that I need to do like around my house and the things that like I need. So like last year when I started my channel, um, I finally bought myself towels like for years. I was using bath towels that were like 13 years old, just like my parents. That's what my parents like the towels they have. They had when I was a kid. Um, anyway, so I'm getting I'm getting I'm, you know, investing money and in getting a path built outside in my yard because my dogs have completely wrecked it. But the point is, is that I don't know what my point, <laughs> I don't know what my point is anymore. Um, but like I had trauma doing that. Um, it was really hard for me. It's it's been really hard for me to be okay spending money and not coming from a lack mindset. If that makes sense. So like. Anyway, I'm feeling hot. Like, look, I'm turning red, which is very symbolic of like breaking karmic cycles and things like that. So I know what this is about. But um, it's been even hard, like not feeling guilt for doing things like that, because that's how I was raised. Well, you shouldn't be taking care of yourself. That's not responsible. <laughs> um, anyway, <sighs> again, I don't know why I tell you any of the things I do, but that's what's going on with me. How are you? <laughs> all red so anyway my entire life I've lived from a lack mindset when it comes to money and things like that and I realized that living in that lack mindset was keeping me in lack um, so that's been another thing I've been working on anyway we're just gonna see what, what needs to come out look at my little red blotches I'm telling you that's what happens when you when you're breaking generational trauma and things like that. Phoenix energy. I'm always. I'm
That's another thing. When you say things like that to muggles, they're like, you mean you're menopausal? Or when you say you're, you hear ringing in your ear and they're like, oh, I think that's just tintinitis or whatever it's called. It's like, F you, no, it's not. <laughs> you silly muggle. Um, anyway, let's see what you need to hear. <laughs> Other than all of that. We have, I bless my body with nourishing foods. So you could be someone who's trying to eat healthier right now. Um, there's a long running joke in my family that I'm afraid of vegetables. It's not true, but I only like a very, like, I, again, I'm autistic. So I only like a very specific few vegetables and fruits and things like that. But I also know from someone who was eating too much junk not too long ago, that when I stopped and I started eating healthier food, my body felt completely different, like completely different. <clears throat> it's funny because I was also talking about how, you know, in my family, nourishing food wasn't a priority over things like addictions. So interesting. Food is a gift, an offering, and nourishment is a blessing. What, when, and how we eat affect us, and we must be conscious of it all on these levels. Your body is your temple, your altar, and what you give it is an offering, a gift, and an act of gratitude. Eating is an ols... Is la 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 la. <laughs> it tried to come out of my mouth all at once. Eating isn't only a survival instinct. It is an active embodiment of the Earth's cycles and elements. It is a living, breathing process of transformation within our bodies. Eating has now become a lifestyle and a habit. We no longer have ceremonies and rituals around food and eating, food and eating, and are not always aware of the impact that unconscious eating has on our bodies, DNA, and vitality. What we eat makes up our body and either nourishes or depletes our energy. Unprocessed foods direct from Mother Earth are natural for the body to assimilate. Now is the time to be more loving and kinder to yourself with your diet and nourishment. So take time to understand your body's constitution and what it needs to get balanced. Asking yourself how you can, how you can give yourself more nourishing foods. Create time and space for growing, buying, and preparing and cooking your food. Create a sacred time and space for all of your meals. When craving something that won't serve your body, ask what you want from yourself and life and what it is you are trying to replace with food. <laughs> oh, that's, that's triggering. <laughs> Why am I eating this chocolate bar? What am I trying to replace? Know that you are worthy of the nourishment from Mother Earth and accept all of her gifts and medicines. Interesting. <clears throat> so let's see what else you need to hear other than that. <laughs> we have, I completely surrender to my path. Interesting. We've got two little teddy bears here. They're not teddy bears. They're actual bears, but... <laughs> Um, thank you for all of you who <laughs> validated me crying over Dumbo. <laughs> Somebody was like, I cannot handle any Disney movie. Me too. Like any Disney movie, I cry. All of them. 101 Dalmatians, I cry. Pocahontas, I cry. Lion King, cry. <laughs> Brother Bear, Brother Bear. This is reminding me of Brother Bear. That's one of my favorite movies. Cry like a baby during that movie. I cannot watch Bambi. I cannot. I will not. <laughs> I will not watch it. I haven't watched it since I don't I don't I don't even remember when I watched it. I cannot and will not watch it. Um Even saying that, do you know what I'm hearing? I'm hearing mother. <laughs> mother <laughs> like no I will not watch Bambi clearly I have mother wounds <laughs> I completely surrender to my path this is almost the last card in the deck our existence <laughs> I'm taking a big old deep breath our existence on earth maybe you're having a hard time surrendering to your path maybe you're having a hard time like I mentioned it the other day I was so out of breath maybe you know you're feeling overwhelmed 
Our existence on earth in this embodiment is a miracle and a divine construction inexplicable in words. We don't know why precisely we are born and why we die. That's not for you either. That's not an affirmation for you either. (laughs) And many of us are afraid of the outcomes of both. When we are in this constricted state, we can't live life fully. We are here to be surprised by life and find ways to surrender and let go of control and flow with ease. Do you accept all of life? Are birth and death equally crucial in the process of life? When we stop living in the dual perspective of good good or bad, positive and negative, we transcend into a state of being that can accept all that is. We stop categorizing and we start knowing that there is an isness of everything that exists and we do not need to try to control all of life and live in fear of what might or might not happen. How often do we enter into a state of paralysis when we discover that our plans and visions fall through like this morning? (laughs) That's so funny that I was talking about how my plans went awry and my whole day went to poop. (laughs) My whole day didn't go to poop. I'm just kidding. Um... When this happens, we have to allow ourselves to feel the emotions and experiences of it and have the human experience of feeling grief, anger, hopelessness, and anxiousness. The experience, the, blah, the experiences are all initiations for us to grow and evolve, pushing us onto the path that our soul desires. Repeat these affirmations daily, weekly, or in meditation, or when you feel like Thoughts are taking over you. I accept all of life. I surrender to my path. I let go of fear, fears and control. Interesting. Which is, you know, I feel like that card lines up really nicely with that chapter we're about to read. <clears throat> Let's see what else comes out for you. Uh, that's too many. If they'll want to come out, they'll come out. Movement helps my energy and emotions to flow. Number seven. Um, so maybe you need to start moving your body. One of the things that I do is I dance in my bathroom where nobody can see me. It helps me release emotions. Um, it helps me feel better. It helps me ground myself. So maybe you need to go dance in your bathroom. Or, you know, if you feel like dancing in front of people, you can do that too. Everything in life is constantly moving and changing, and movement is the key to transformation and creation. If we are not moving our bodies, the energy can't move properly, and the emotional bodies can stagnate. Physical movement moves our whole being and is what our bodies are made of. Do you have movement and flow in your life? Are you feeling stuck with emotions, thoughts, or energy flow? There are many ways of moving the body, including physical movement, exercise, yoga, and other physical practices, but it can also be movement through conscious breathing and subtle movement with the eyes. Any way that you can see if a small or big activation exercise with or what? Let me back up. Any way that you can see if a, if a small or big activation exercise can help you and your emotions flow more. Emotions can get stuck in our body, especially when unexpressed and when the body hasn't fully embodied the feeling. It is unresolved and needs a way to be moved and transformed. The same goes for our, our energy and the subtler aspects of our body. Now is the time to integrate more movement into your daily practice to move forward towards your healing path. Movement practices, easy stretches in the morning, getting out, breathing fresh air, letting the eyes consume nature, physical movement through walking, running, or other forms, breathing exercises, exercises that move energy and emotions, simple eye movements, up, down, side to side, and around, shaking, dancing, and singing. Beautiful. I'm going to get you another one. (laughs) 
Let's get another one. Let's get another one. What do you need to hear? We have, as I heal my mind, I heal my body. And don't even ask me to watch Old Yeller ever. I don't even know why that's a movie. <laughs> um, as I heal my mind, I heal my body. Horses could be symbolic. Number two, High Priestess Energy. So, the connection between mind and body, we'll read after this. I mean that book, not this one. The connection between the mind and body is so direct that we can feel the physical impact of specific thoughts, information, or different forms of communication. We can sense feelings of worry in our belly, anxious thoughts in our chest, and how mental stress can alter our appetite, to mention a few. Have you noticed how your body and mind are interconnected? Are you experiencing physical imbalances rooted in a thought system and patterns that are not serving you? Now is the time to realize that your thoughts are much more than an inner radio of endless chatter and scenarios. Instead, feel the mind's power regarding your physical body and reality. Thoughts are fueled with energy that directly impacts all layers of your body, all the way down to your cells. Your body just gives you a physical manifestation of the more subtle layers of your mind, energy, and soul. Take the time to integrate mind and body through meditation and other practices that help you become more present and more embodied to heal. Body-mind practices. Daily meditation, journaling, creating a daily gratitude practice, finding the root of negative thought patterns, Start noticing how words and the mind impact your body directly. Ask your body what the mind, ne mind needs and what the body needs. Engage in physical activities that distract the mind from constantly thinking and create silence purposefully daily. <laughs> that was difficult for me. <laughs> um, interesting. So let's read that book. <clears throat> So there's no such thing as falling behind. There's not just one way your life can unfold. Here is a sentence that will either disrupt your worldview or free you or probably both. Everybody is having the exact experience that they need to be having right now. This is hard to expect, accept when we see people around us making what we perceive to be grave errors in their life. This is hard to accept when we witness the people we love struggling and we want to show them the way out. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is hard to accept when we can't stop judge it, judging and punishing ourselves for not being better, farther, and different. When we are young and before we really have a sense of autonomy, our lives are governed by a process, a specific order. We know that we learn to crawl, then walk. We know that we learn to tie our shoes and to put on our jackets. We know that when we're done with second grade, we go to third. Our lives are built in reinforcing systems. We are reinforced by our peers, by our family, by our grades. We know that the goal is to graduate, pursue a job or an education, get married and have kids. And then of course, life happens. We find that this one formula for an existence is just really a suggestion one to guide us towards prosperity and not self-destruction. We often aren't given a lesson on how to be fulfilled. We aren't often told what to do if we don't quite get there when everybody else does. If our big milestones are letdowns, or most commonly, if we check off every box on the list and find that we, how, we are somehow still empty inside, oh my gosh, that's something I talk about all the time in my love readings, about how we were programmed to do life a certain way, we were programmed to, you know, go to high school, then go to college, then meet someone, then, you know, get a dog and then get a house and then get a white picket fence and then have the children and then get, then get the minivan, you know? Um, and sometimes some of us, after having all those things, still feel a void within. Falling behind is an illusion. There is no such thing. There is not one way for your life to unfold. Sometimes we have to take the back road because the long way around teaches us what we need to know. 
Sometimes we sit in our own pain for years before we start waking up and adjusting our behavior. Sometimes we learn from being different. We learn what we learn from being different is more important than what we'd learn from fitting in. Sometimes our greatest successes are decades in the making. Sometimes we peak early. Sometimes we need years of growth and self-discovery to decide what we need next. Sometimes the point of the journey is to have different experiences, not just to cycle through a series of them until we decide on the one thing we want forevermore. When we believe that it is possible to fall behind, we place limits on our lives. When we believe that it is possible to fall, fall behind, it is because we think that the point of life is just to arrive at a certain series of checkpoints until we die. Graduate, get a job, pay the bills, mildly hate yourself, get married, fight with your spouse, have kids, fight with them, grow old, retire, and then try and enjoy what's left. If you are truly worried about falling behind your peers, please ask yourself what you really think you're falling behind on. So many people met every single milestone they were meant to meet. Nope. So many people met every single milestone they were meant to and are not happier for it. This is because life is not just about going through the motions. Life is meant to be lived. Life is meant to be experienced. And often we find that our pain is the portal to awakening to that experience. Discomfort is a signal that there is more for us. There's more to savor, more to feel, to be. What if you did not measure your life by how it compared to who is around you, but instead how it felt inside of you? What if your priority wasn't on the type of growth that people can see, but the type of personal growth that revolutionizes you? The kind that changes the way you do everything from sipping your coffee in the morning to breathing in the spring air. Sometimes the setback is the journey because the path you were on wasn't going somewhere you wanted anyway. Sometimes a setback is the wake-up call you need to save your life, because otherwise you are barreling towards your own self-destruction. Sometimes being different isn't a bad thing. It means you're on a journey of something deeper and something bigger that most people probably wouldn't even dare to dream of. I love that. So, short little chapter today. Short little chapter. But maybe what I'll do is I will get, I will get, hmm, what do I want to get? Hang on. I have <laughs> too many cards. I'm drowning and there's like cards, like I know that you can't see, but I have cards right up into this space. So I just feel like I'm all constantly knocking them over with my elbows um, anyway, I wanted to get a different deck for you today. These are those messages from Spirit. So let's get one message for you from this deck. That's the one. Dearest you, on Earth, humans learn about life by telling stories and creating new ones based on shared experiences. Eventually, after repeating one often enough, it becomes your main story that you use to define yourself and the world. So to get the answers you seek, you must get vulnerable and hear your story when you tell it. Ask, why do you tell it? Is it really true? What else can be true? Can you see the truth that spirit is on, in all things? Do you see how other stories overlap and intertwine? Spirit loves stories, for they are like blueprints for co-creation. So, so tell the one we know to be true about you. A story of courage, gratitude, and honesty. Tell an empowered story about well-being, wisdom, and grace. You will experience your world according to the story you tell about it. So make sure they're stories that you're proud of. Hmm. And I'm going to get one more. I'm going to get one more for you. So let's see what you need to hear. One more. <clears throat> I'm going to take the one that fell right in front of me. Dear you, there are times in life when taking a risk is better left for another day. Other times are perfect for taking that leap, no matter how dangerous it might seem. Well, hold on to your parachute strings for today. Oh, hold on to your parachute strings for today is leap time. 
Realize that no matter what, we will not let you fall, drown, get lost, or hurt yourself in any way on this one. Even if it may feel like you are in a free fall, we are here for you, and you can stop freaking out about getting hurt and relax into this transition to something new. All the elements are in place, and your soul is ready for a new experience, no matter what you're asking about. It's time to take the risk and do that thing that scares you. No matter what happens, you will land softly, right on target. Don't worry about the outcome. Spirit's got that one covered. It's taking the leap itself. That's the point. So something about taking a leap of faith here. It just got super sunny. Again, I've got cards stacked everywhere. I'm running out of room. Hang on. <laughs> Let me just put away this one. That'll make a little room. Get in there. <laughs> and then I'm going to get you these, the affirmators. These are those funny little affirmations that I love so much. Um, I love them. <laughs> and I love you, so it's a good combination. Jeez, what are you? We have conviction. My convictions are solid and I believe in my vision, no matter how far-fetched or dreamery it might seem. I choose to roll with my good friend's shameless self-expression. There's no need to water down my ideas or compromise who I am in order to be seen, heard, and loved by others. So let's crank up the authenticity and get this me and my original ideas party started. So being your true authentic self, conviction. We just see blueprints there. I know you can't read the words, but I can show you the pictures. <laughs> We have engagement. Today I make the conscious choice to engage with the world in an active way. I'll take a new route and talk to strangers. I will smell flowers and pet dogs and maybe walk around barefoot for a while if I'm not inside a 7-Eleven. At the very least, I'll have a day that's slightly more interesting than average. And at the most, I'll have a startling epiphany or make a friend who will change my life forever. No pressure. And we have wholeness. I am complete, whole, and filled with love. I have everything I need. If I ask or look for more, I'm ignoring the love and gifts that are already in my life. Instead, I'll be grateful and acknowledge that anything else would be extra icing on life's cake. Cute. So maybe gratitude is something that you need to focus on if you're feeling hopeless. We have transmutation. Last one. I have the ability to transmute negative feelings into positive ones, and I exercise it at will. The next time someone frustrates, annoys, eats tuna too close to me, I love that one. <laughs> I mean, I struggle with the sound. I have, it's called misophonia or something. I struggle with the sound of like people eating and stuff. Anyway. So, the next time someone frustrates, annoys, eats tuna too close to me, I will lean towards kindness and acceptance rather than stabbiness and loathing. But if they're also humming while eating that tuna, then all bets are off. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the last one I'm going to get for you. But thank you for joining me for another Soul Tribe reading. I am going to leave it here. Um, but I am, as usual, I'm sending you guys lots of love and light. The next chapter that we're going to be reading is, this is how you will know if you're actually on the wrong path in life. So I'm curious what that chapter says. It says deep down, you already know you're on the wrong path. Interesting. Anyway, I don't want to peek. I don't want to peek. We'll read it together, um, during the next one, but Thank you again for joining me, my friends, and I'm sending you guys, as always, lots of love and light and compassion and all of that. I hope you guys are all doing well, and I'll talk to you guys soon. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're eating, tell me. <laughs> and yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.